Hey guys, today we are going to make dog butts. How cute is this little poo bag holder thingy? You unzip it and inside are like the, you know, when you're walking your dog and you're scooping the poop. Um, and it's got a little clasp on it so it can go on the leash. I've got a bunch of different breeds. Today we're gonna do a bulldog. But first, uh, my name is Kelly. If you're new here, we uh, do a lot of embroidery and sewing on this channel. I also do sublimation and vinyl, all the good crafty things for an Etsy business or just a business, handmade business in general. So if that's something that you're into, please uh, hit the subscribe button down below as well as the like button, it helps me out a lot. I'm pretty uh, new to the YouTube world, so trying to grow here, and uh, although frankly, I do it a lot for fun, but hey, part of the fun is growing. So again, it helps me out. Um, so like I said, we're going to do these. These are all done in the hoop, uh, and I'm kind of new to the in the hoop stuff. I did a couple bags uh, earlier this year, and they were the Parker on the Porch is one. These are from someone I just found. They're called um, Off With Their Threads, which is really cute. And I mean, all of their stuff is adorable, not just these bags. They have a ton of cute things. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Frankly, I don't even really know what it means to be affiliated with someone. I suppose it has something to do with the exchange of money or, I don't know, gifts, whatever. No, I just like them. Just found them. So, uh, yeah, we're going to make one of these. I've sold a few, and I've got a friend uh, from high school who has a bull or had a bulldog that um, passed away recently. So, we're going to make one for him. And I want to start at the computer because uh, we're going to do our, you can do them lined or unlined and I don't do mine with lining. Uh, I just don't think it's necessary. I mean it would probably be cuter but I try to uh, I'm trying to keep the sale price down and one of the ways to do that is to not line it. I mean not that I don't have a ton of scrap fabric that I could use but it's quick um, easy and uh, I do it a little bit different than what the instructions say so I thought that this would be uh, doing a video on it would be good uh, nothing majorly different but something I learned um, doing other in the hoop stuff but what you need to do these is you need some let's see let's go over here what you need um, to hoop with so let me take you over here Hello. Okay, this might be a little bit better angle. Uh, this room is really narrow, and so it's hard for me to know where to put the camera so that you guys, can, so that I'm getting nice light from the window, but that you can uh, still see my machine and stuff. Not that you really need to look at me much, but um, let me tilt you just a little bit more towards the machine. So we've got some tear away stabilizer here. And uh, it's just, um, I probably got this at Joann's or something. Just a pretty cheapy tear away. Um, I don't have a specific brand that I use. I don't really, until I started doing uh, these in the hoop bags, I didn't really use tear away much uh, because I don't use it on clothing. And then if I'm using, uh, if I'm doing bags or, or like other kind of bags or something, just monogramming a bag, I use sticky, which technically is a tear away, but just non sticky tear away. I haven't used much, so I think I've probably had this roll forever. I wouldn't even know where to go to replace it, but for something like this, it doesn't really matter. Whatever cutaway, tearaway, not cutaway, tearaway you have available to you. Uh, and that is kind of important. It needs to be tearaway. And let's see what else. So we're going to make them with vinyl. So this one's going to be black. and. The instructions tell you what sizes to cut, and I've already cut them all, but they're essentially, you've got a six by six piece. This will be the back, and then these will be the two front. I think this one's two by six, and this one's like four and a half by six. 
these don't have to be exact. Um, I try to make them pretty exact because I don't want to waste any of my vinyl. Uh, this is just vinyl. I got all this at Joanne. Uh, I know there's a lot of good vinyl places uh, online to get like embroidery vinyl and you can use those. Now you do want to use vinyl with these. You don't want to use, when you're doing it unlined, if you were doing it lined, you could use uh, regular cotton. Although now that I've said that, let me show you. Your front, you want it to be vinyl. And the reason why you want it to be vinyl is look, we're not doing, this is just a straight edge. So it needs to not fray right here at the zipper. Whereas if we had just like a cotton, so sorry about my hair, y'all. Um, if we were just doing a cotton, um, it would fray. It, it doesn't have it, you'll understand more when we stitch it out, but it's not like folded over with a seam. So your front really does need to be vinyl, even if you are lining it. But uh, we're doing everything in vinyl. So I've got the front, the, I'm, I'm sorry, the back. I've got the two pieces for the front. And then what else? Oh, you need like a skinny piece because we're going to put one of these little clippy deals on it. Um, mine are, I got these off Amazon. This was a uh, 50 pack. And I remember it being very cheap. If you tried to get these at like uh, Joanne or Walmart or whatever, it, they would be pretty pricey. But this 50 pack I got pretty cheap and they've lasted me a while. But I cut this strip about uh, 0.75 because this is an inch. Uh, and I think it only needs to be about, you know, we won't use all of this. It can be much shorter. This is just the piece I had. So we need that. You need a zipper. Um, oh, the vinyl for the dog. Now this you could use just fabric because this is going to be like the applique part that's the dog and that could be just fabric um i have this little piece and it's going to work perfect so we're going to use that um zipper the zipper does not have to be this long same deal i bought this huge pack on amazon and it was super cheap um it's multicolored, which is kind of fun um i might go back and reorder and see if maybe i can get some of my favorite colors like I don't know I mean am I ever gonna eat well I guess I could use all of these at some point yellow eh, not a bright yellow yeah so uh I have these it does these do not need to be this long I've done some bags that needed I think these are 12 inches um for this probably eight inches I don't know what the instructions say but well actually as a matter of fact I think the instructions might have a misprint. I think the instructions say 18 inches, um, but I think you only need about eight. Um, so you need that. What else? I think that's it. Um, although I want to show you guys, look what I got today at Dollar Tree. These are their eye, eyebrow uh, clippers scissors and there was like a little comb on it but the comb came off but I just thought they were such a great shape for applique but I don't know I don't have any scraps here I haven't tried them yet so I don't know if they're gonna cut well or not but I just thought it was funny that they're shaped just like some good applique scissors and I only paid a dollar for them so anyway what else oh I wouldn't show you these two we're not gonna do this today I don't think but I bought this little kit on Amazon at some point, and it's those, these things. And I did do one of these. Maybe if I am, when I'm done with this video, if I'm smart enough, I'll figure out how to post a picture up here. Like people do that, it seems next level. But I'm gonna see if I can do it, because I did one of these um, bags for a friend, and she just got a new puppy. And so I did one of these, that oh, one's broken did one of these. Um, it's like those key fob things. And so I did a loop with her dog's name on it. And then uh, that loop then clipped onto the bag. So I don't know if I'm going to offer those for real. Because um, again, I'm just trying to keep the cost 
low and the sales price low. It's just kind of, these are very fun to me. I enjoy doing them. So anyway, so I bought this little kit and you, you put your vinyl in here and then you just squish it down. Uh, but again, we're, I don't think we're going to do that today. Uh, well, for one thing, I don't think I know this person's dog's name. Uh, but also just in, for the sake of time. So, like I said, we're going to do this unlined, which means that once we load the design, we have, to, well, we don't have to. We are going to delete some of the steps because we don't need to sew in our lining. Now, you can do that. The last ones I've done, I've just skipped those steps on my machine, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it in, in, in Brilliance just in case. Uh, it is kind of the smarter way because if I do this now, I can save it without the lining steps. And then when I go to do it again, I don't have to skip them on my machine, you know, every time. If you're making 20 of these, then you don't have to skip those steps every single time. So let me take you over here to the computer. Okay, here is our adorable bulldog and his little butt there. So we need to, if you come over here to On In Brilliance, and there's your whole design. If you click this little arrow, it does every single step. So we don't need any of the steps that are for uh, the lining. Now you may have to go through and review your instructions to know which ones those are. Uh, for the sake of time, let's see. Okay, so this one's the this one's going to run the whole like placement stitch. So we need that. And these will make more sense as we go through. That's to tack down your zipper. That's to tack down your upper, your lower, and then it'll stitch out the front and the front. And then there's the bulldog. So we want him. And we want that. Okay, we don't need this one. That's gonna be a lining. So uh, if you're following along and you have this design, it's going to be step 11. We don't need, so we'll delete that. Um, and then now, again, we don't need step 11 because that the new 11, we don't need that. Um, so then we do need his little hole there and the satin stitch for that. And then this is going to tack down, or that's our placement stitch for our, um, this little guy that we're gonna fold in half and put the ring on. We need, so we need that. And then we need the thing that tacks it down. And then we need that. Now the last one you could delete, it is, or maybe the second to the last one of these is a, uh, is for the lining, but since it goes around the whole bag, I leave both of them because I feel like it kind of reinforces it. So I guess we really only deleted two steps. The other thing is um, we're running the satin stitch here. Uh, I did get some of these. And you can do that, you could do, let me, okay, sorry, I wanted to turn you around there. So you could do the hole with these things and those, they're just like grommets where you, um, and I got these at Hobby Lobby, they were on sale. So you put the two pieces together and then you have this little tool that you hammer together. I haven't done it yet, I'm not gonna do it today but it is an option. So you could skip that satin stitch if you wanted to. Um, and there's really no reason why I haven't done it yet, but I just, I kind of like this. I think it's cute with the satin stitch. So uh, we're gonna keep doing that. Let me tilt you towards the machine here. So, oh, I didn't save my design. Let's save our design. So we're saved to the machine. And there he is. I know you can't really see that, but he's there. 
then the only other thing you would maybe want to do is uh, set your stops. Um, so you go to, whoops, hang on. Did I do that right? No, you want to go there to your colors. And then, you know, we want to stop on the first. You pretty much want to stop on everything because you got to lay stuff down. Um, actually, that one we don't need to stop after. Uh, and that one we don't need to stop after. We do need to stop after that because then we're going to do our satin stitches. And we'll need to stop after that because we're going to have to cut the hole. Um, Y'all, can you believe how many times I'm saying hole in this video? Okay. All right. So we're good. Um, we do want to stop after that one. So again, if you don't set those stops, it's probably okay. If you're sitting here, you can kind of do the reserve stop. Now, I know some of you don't have this machine, so obviously your machine is going to look a little bit different. Uh, but let's run the placement stitch, and then I'll show you what's next. So here's what it looks like after the first step. And so what you do is you take your zipper right side up. I have been known on occasion to flip it over. You do not want this. You want it right side up. And you're going to line it up with this top line here. You can take it off the machine to do this, but I don't think we really need to right now. Um, we're going to line it up with that top line and tape it down. Uh, I do not recommend at all um, trying to hold it with your fingers. For one thing, we don't want any needles in fingers. And for another, uh, this one in particular gets a, is a little, it's pretty close to the teeth. Uh, so you really want it lined up with this top line uh, or else your stitching is going to be off. And I'm going to have to do this off camera. I'm not talented enough to talk and do this at the same time. All right, I went ahead and ran that stitching line. Um, and so it, tacked, or it stitched it down up here and it stitched it here. You can't see it very well because I'm using the same color thread as the zipper. Uh, but what you'll do next is you'll take your thin piece a vinyl and you want to line it up with the teeth. I've got one little piece of tape here. It doesn't really matter, but so line it up with the teeth. It's kind of hard to see. I should have probably picked like contrasting colors so you guys could see better. But again, we're just using regular scotch tape and kind of taping it down. I do find it important with these steps to tape them down. I tried to kind of hold it right here one time and it just shifted and the stitching didn't look great. So do that. And then, so the next stitch is going to like tack this down and then run the whole thing. And then, but then it's gonna do the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do our bottom one as well. So get it up close to the teeth. So this is why I was saying you wanna use a vinyl for the front, because if this was just like a cotton or a you know, canvas of some sort, you would get fraying up here. But with this vinyl, there's no fraying and it's already cut. And so we won't have to do anything else up here. I just think these in the hoop bags are amazing. Like that I can do all of this on, I mean, I sew and I'm a good sewer, but to be able to do this without having to even take my sewing machine out is amazing. All right, let me run this. Okay, so the steps I did, and again, it's black, so it's a little hard to see, but it's stitched all around this. I think it, it does this one first, and then it does this one. And you don't have to cut any of this. You don't even have to really, at this point, take this tape off just yet. But I also went ahead and did my placement stitch for my applique. And I 
think this piece of fabric, so again, this part could be just fabric. I'm using vinyl because I like the way it looks, but we'll go ahead and stitch this down. Okay, moment of truth, y'all. What do you think? Are my Dollar Tree scissors going to work? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they are not awesome. You know, maybe they would be with fabric. So I'll try, and they'll be good for like snipping threads and stuff. But I was hoping that I could use them sort of like this. I keep wanting those kind with the two bins, and I never get around to ordering some. Those don't seem to be a kind that you can really get um, just anywhere. It seems like you have to go online to get them. So anyway, all right, so I'm going to finish cutting this out and then I'll go ahead and stitch. I think it's actually going to do his face first and then the satin stitch. So I'll do both of those and come back. All right, here we are talking about holes again. So I did a super cute little bully face and the satin stitch around here. And then I went ahead and did, I guess the quote unquote placement stitch for that. Um, this can be a little tricky. You need to cut all the way around without cutting the stitching, but getting all this vinyl off. So I kind of, I'm not going to do it right now. I really need to go over to my cutting mat, but I've kind of found that if I go through the first layer of vinyl, which is this light brown, and cut it all the way, then I can go down a layer and do the black. Um, and I kind of use, I use both this X-Acto knife and my scissors. Uh, I guess this first layer, I don't have to. My probably while I, why I will do it off camera is that my X-Acto knife is not very sharp. I need to get another one, but you can kind of do an X and then cut it real close here. Get your scissors in there, whatever it takes. Just don't cut that circle. Uh, and I find you do have to get pretty close. And again, this is just if you're doing the satin stitch. If you want to use those grommets, this part might be a little bit easier because you would just make the hole and then, you know, stick your grommet in there. So, all right, I'm going to do this off camera because I got to move it into better light here. All right, there I think I got it. So it should look like that after you cut it all out. Uh, so we'll put it on the machine and do the satin stitch. Um, and this is one of those times where I just hold my breath and hope that I've cut close enough. I think so. But I guess we're going to find out. Yay. It worked beautifully. So no fraying under there. That was definitely close enough. That was kind of my best one yet. Uh, the other stitch I did was I went ahead and did this step. Now, this step is kind of optional because the reality is you could put your, um, you could put this part wherever you want it, but I like it there, um, and, and that shows me where, so when I say it's optional, the machine, the next step is it's going to stitch right there and stitch this down. If you wanted this, like either over here or somewhere else, you would just have to really tape it down and then run your final uh, stitching to keep it in place. But this is nice because it's got this to where it, uh, it tacks it down for you so that when you put the back on, you don't have to worry about this shifting. So this is important. Don't do it like this, right? Because when we're finished, we're going to cut all this off. You do it where your hardware is on <clears throat> the inside. And so I'm going to go ahead and take some tape and tape it down. And you can keep this part as long or as short as you want it. I'm going to do this one pretty short. So we're going to tape that down. And then our next step is going to stitch this down right there. All right, so now this is all stitched down for us and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, 
let's remove some of this tape. Again, all this is going to be cut off, so it's not imperative, but I need to remove this because I want to show you guys a little trick. The instructions for this particular bag, uh, the next step would actually be the lining, but and then you but we're not doing lining, and then we would put this on top upside down and it's going to stitch and it's going to stop stitching like right here. So let me move this back a little bit. It's going to stop. St it's going to leave a hole so that we can turn it inside out. We're not going to do that. We are going to open our zipper. If you open your zipper, not all the way, you don't want to go past this and you don't want this to hit your needle. So about three quarters of the way, we're going to stitch this down and we're going to, that's why we left those last two steps. So the step for the lining goes all the way around. And then that last stitch, I go ahead and still do it kind of as a reinforcer, but it, it leaves a hole, but we're not going to use that hole because we've opened the zipper. Once we're finished, we'll be able to uh, turn our bag inside or right side out through this zipper hole. So I'm not going to tape this. Oh, actually, no. You know what? I am going to tape this down because on one of them, I didn't, and it kind of bunched up on me a little bit. So open your zipper. That's very important. So if you didn't, if you left that hole and you turned it inside out, then you'd have to glue that hole. Or, I mean, I guess you could sew it. Whoops. Um, but you'd have to glue that hole open or shut, and I don't want to do that. So tape it down nicely and then we'll run those last two and they'll go all the way around the bag. Okay, I did those last two in different colors so that maybe you could see more what I was talking about. So the light brown is the second to the last step and if you were doing a lining, you would have uh, put some fabric back here and this would have stitched that down. But we want this one because it completely closes it off down here and we want ours completely closed off. And then this final one, again, I just ran it too because I feel like it reinforces it all. Um, so it is done. We are done now. We just have to, we're done with all the stitching. So we just pull this off our hoop. And again, I don't worry too much about the tape at this point because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting. But if I flip it over, you can see what I'm talking about. We used cut away. I mean, cut away, I keep saying that. It's not cut away. It is tear away stabilizer. So we can get in there and we can tear all of this away and have access to our open zipper. And we use that hole to uh, flip our bag the right way out. So you can usually, so this stitching right here is just from that very first step that showed me my placement. So this is not a structural line right here. You can just clip that off or do what I'm doing with an X-Acto knife. You could probably get a, um, uh, seam ripper. Let me see if I have one here. Seam ripper might be easier. So we'll get in there. We'll get this started. Let's see if I can. It's always easy until you're on camera. So all of this peels away. And see now there's the hole we want. Not one down here that we have to we have to um, glue together. So you can take some time, and or at least I do. I take my time. Oh, let's use our fancy. Uh, let's use these scissors for all of our clipping away of this stuff. So this stuff all just tears. I go ahead and tear all of this off too. I don't so much worry about um, inside the dog, but if you don't. Um, it's going to start tearing away anyway, 
And then the person might think that you've, you know, given them a bad product or something or that the inside is coming out or whatever. So, okay, that's, now we're in business. So there's another one um, that's just, this was just a placement stitching line. So we can tear all that off. And I go ahead and do all of this before I even turn it upside down or inside, ugh, right side out. So tear all this off. And I do find that you have to do a fair bit of stitching here around the zipper or I mean, stitching, uh, cutting of stitches around the zipper or else it looks kind of junky. So, and all of this has to come out. So we'll just keep moving right along. Um, where's my seam ripper? So get all this out too. And again, we've got another stitching line up here because remember that first stitch we did had all of these placement lines. So that's going to keep your stabilizer from just tearing real easily. You got to get in there and kind of clip them away. And then get all of this. I've had some uh, tear away that tears away on these bags a little bit easier. Again, who knows where I got this uh, stabilizer from or what brand it is or any of that stuff. I have no clue. So let me get this one more section and then uh, we'll flip, well, we'll cut it and we'll flip it. And then I'll go back probably and clean it up a little bit more later. But let me get rid of all of this. Again, up here by the zipper, you'll probably have to do some snipping of some things. That's the area you really want to look nice. Okay. So that's good enough for now. We've gotten enough of it. So you want to take some scissors and they need to be fairly sharp, but I probably wouldn't use my best scissors that I have for it. And you're just going to cut about a quarter of an inch away from this main line. And yes, you just cut right through your zipper. all the way around I usually find that I have to go back and maybe get either clip the corners or come a little bit closer to the corners but for now we're just gonna do this and then you could probably turn it inside out like this I kind of get in there and open the zipper all the way and then you just, let me move all this out of the way. I know I'm a little, I'm a little close here. So just flip him right side out. Yay, I said it right that time. We are going right side out. I'm not too careful with this step. Maybe you should be, I don't know. I just, since it's vinyl, I just kind of manhandle it, really. Work, work to get him flipped back the right way. Oh my goodness, look at that little face. I just love it. Um, so you could use your scissors to kind of poke out this, these corners. Again, maybe I wouldn't do that if it was um, fabric or I usually try to have a knitting needle sitting around um, and really kind of poke out those corners. Again, sometimes I have to go back and clip the corners or cut the corners a little bit closer 
Um, look at those looking nice. And then you've got your two corners up here. Um, working with this vine. So yeah, so that corner, I'm probably going to have to go back. See how I left all of that there? I could probably cut slits, but I might just go ahead and cut him a little bit closer. You don't want to get too close, but again, that's part of the reason why we do both of those stitches. Just to make sure that we're completely reinforced there. I don't, I mean, I don't see these bags getting a lot of wear and tear in terms of opening and closing. I mean, I guess it depends on how often you take your dogs for a walk, but I mean, once you put a bag in there, then it's good to go for a long time. Again, I guess depending on how often you go for a walk and how much your pupper poops. Um, but I'm gonna get those corners out. Sometimes it does take time. Try not to poke a hole in your vinyl. But there you go. There is our super cute little bulldog. Um, I, here, I'm gonna flip you around. Okay, so just the last thing I wanted to mention, um, these, I bought some of these. So we have a dog, but he is four pounds of nothing. And he has a spinal cord injury. He had a spinal cord injury before we even got him. So we don't really know what happened. Um, but he doesn't really have access to... Uh, he, he can use his back legs, but not well. He mostly drags them. So he cannot go for walks because he would tear up his legs on the sidewalk. Um, so I, anyway, all that to say, I have no use for these. I have no use for this. Um, but I bought some of these to, uh, be able to display this or, you know, take pictures and show kind of what it's used for. Uh, but I bought them at Walmart and it was like an eight pack. Again, I, that's all they had. That's the cheapest they had. It was like an eight pack for five bucks. Um, and that was the cheapest they had. So I've been giving these to people when I sell them. Like I just include this for now until they're gone because I don't need them laying around my house. But um, what I was going to say was when I bought my fancy scissors that don't work at uh, the Dollar Tree, they I saw that they have these. And it's like four for a dollar. So just in case you needed, you know, again, to kind of show it off with pictures and stuff. Um, that might be a good option. Or if you have a dog and you need some, that's a good option too. Because why do, they don't need to be nice, right? I mean, I guess you don't want them to leak or to have a hole in them. But anyway, all right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Again, if you found anything useful in this video at all, please like and, sh and uh, subscribe. What's that word? Um, I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you.